here, he's here. About 45 seconds late, but better late than never. Very good morning to you, my dear friends. It's a Wednesday morning, middle of the week here in the Spice Isle, under beautiful sunny skies, feeling on top of the world. Well, about here, yeah? Thank you very much for joining us for today's edition of uh, Good Day Grenada. I see she's, she's back at the top of the list this morning. Hazel is there, so uh, hope you didn't mind me being 45 seconds late, but I uh, forgot to turn on the lights, had to go uh, do that. So, <laughs> so here we go. Well, my dear friends, one week from today, Christmas 2019, 2019. And you know what we're going to be doing this morning. Yeah, we plan on starting this morning, and uh, I really hope you guys aren't going to let us down. I really, really hope that you're going to do... I don't ask a lot, but when I do, I do so optimistically, hoping that you will respond positively. And uh, since last week, we've been asking you to think of something really good. Probably the best thing, or maybe not the best, maybe the second, third, fourth, fifth best thing that's happened to you this year, 2019. And share them with us, you know, so that you give the rest of the country some hope during these very, very difficult and troubled times. Let people know that there is good happening in this country, yeah, yeah. And uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that this morning. I also have a couple of videos I wanna show to you this morning. <laughs> uh, seems like Africa, I don't know, maybe because I'm relatively new, I'm only about a year and a half old on uh, Facebook, but uh, there's been a lot about Africa showing up. You're seeing different African leaders speaking out, you know, about what has happened, what is happening, and what should happen in Africa. Well, I came across a little piece uh, last night where this gentleman, I'm not going to mention any names, but he is a, a leader in Africa. And uh, he's talking about what should be with Africa and why Africa is where it is. And as I sat listening to this guy, I thought to myself, is he talking about Africa or Grenada? So many similarities. Well, we're gonna play that for you and you'll figure it out. Then, oh yeah, man, for all you pet lovers out there, let me see if, uh, uh, let me see if uh, Ryan is there. I haven't seen Ryan yet this morning. Um, but for those of you who are pet lovers, especially little puppies and big puppies, I have a little video which uh, should bring a smile to your face, middle of the week, why not? It's captioned, off to Doggyville we go. Yeah, we're going to make a visit to Doggyville this morning. And I do hope that brings you a little smile. Then we have the National Report. National report uh, sent to us last night. And yeah, Sharon. Just got a WhatsApp here from uh, Sharon a couple of minutes ago. She's on her way. And she's going to be sitting right there. Chairs already set up for her this morning. So uh, we're looking forward to a little visit with Sharon this morning. We do every Wednesday morning, every Wednesday morning. And would you believe this is probably the last time I'm going to be seeing her uh, for the year. Can you believe that? Because uh, next Wednesday, Christmas Day, and I'm begging for the day off on Christmas Day, right? Uh, I really hope I wouldn't be sitting in this chair. Get a couple of extra hours of sleep. And then the following week, New Year's Day. So. This is our last Wednesday, I would imagine, uh, for the year. And what a year it's been. Now, the class is going to be called to order at the bottom of the hour when Sharon joins us. 
She is going to be adjudicating your assignments. Yeah. Lucky you have Sharon and not Margaret <laughs> doing that task this morning. <laughs> oh, yeah. So uh, let's, uh, oh, before I get down to brass tacks, let me say hi to uh, who else is there. Hazel is first. Kipling sending his blessings. Joan Wellington uh, saying uh, good morning, Mr. Grand and listeners of this great program. I hope you're feeling much better today from a cold. Boy, let me tell you, I am feeling better. I'm still shaken up because this thing gives you a lash of wood, if you know what I'm talking about. And just a few minutes ago, I was speaking to somebody who uh, Sharon and I are going to visit when we get through here this morning. Um, a lady who uh, spends all her time at home. She's not very well. And this morning she has something else to worry about. She's got the flu. She could hardly speak to me when she called a few minutes ago. So I've been bumping into people all over the place who have this thing. What they call it? The, the Al Jazeera, I think is what they're calling it this year. It's kind of late. Usually comes right after Carnival, but uh, so did Al Jazeera's uh, documentary that came after Carnival. So, anyhow, let's uh, let's get started here now. Would it be fair to say that the word corruption has probably been the most globally used word in 2019? Agree with that? Regardless of who's speaking in this video, listen to his words. This man's talking about corruption. And tell me, tell me, if you don't find his words synonymous with Grenada. Check this out. That corruption should be treated as a crime against humanity? Without doubt. And I've always said, and, and I think that this, sometimes you've got to raise things to the level of the absurd. Because what does corruption do to, to a country? Look, look at the, the thieving ways of Mobutu Sese Seko in the Democratic Republic of Congo. Congo has never recovered from the thieving of Mobutu and his acolytes. How many people did not have medicine? in hostels, including a hostel named after his own mother, Mama Yemo in Kinshasa. How many died? Perhaps more than in the Holocaust. How many people have died in the Cameroons in the 30 years that Paul Beer has been the president through corruption and all that money is tucked away in Paris in France? How many people die in our roads because of portals, because some government official took away money that ought to have been used to make good roads. So this is a crime against humanity, for which punishment should be the ultimate punishment. And in China, they do exactly that. They come to this part of the world, they corrupt our leaders, but if you are corrupt in China, they'll deal with you firmly, swiftly, and take away your life, so that you are no longer a danger to society. I believe that corruption should be a crime against humanity. Because the, the impact of corruption in Africa in many areas, how many people are maimed because we imported polio vaccination that were not potent so that somebody could buy a mansion in Florida or some other island in the United States of America or in the Caribbean? How many? How many of the roads here in Nigeria, how many have been involved in defense contract corruption so that we have in a situation where we cannot have things that we ought to deserve? I mean, it has been more pernicious than any other thing. Corruption has killed more people than the civil wars combined in Africa. And yet we treat it with velvet gloves. We glamorize these individuals we continue to elect them in office they bribe us with 500 naira 500 cities 20 kwanza and we continue to elect them and then they claim democracy look recently during the un general assembly in new york new york what and how african leaders behave they stayed in the most expensive hotels the world of astoria except the Tanzanian delegation. 
And yet, in their homes, people don't have portable water to drink. Yet, in their homes, there is no medicine in hospitals. Corruption, corruption, corruption. You know, if there's one thing I hope we leave behind in 2020, is the word corruption. It's going to take a lot of doing, a lot of doing here. But just remember, it's not just here. Like you see, it's happening all over the world. Corruption, corruption, corruption. In my anxiety to get cracking here this morning, I uh, neglected to go through the entire list of pilgrims on there in the class this morning. Uh, Michelle Forsyth, good morning to you, Michelle. Benedict Cador, good morning. Carlene uh, is saying good morning. Kathy Roberts and Bradley Vespre is also there. Good to see you guys. Francis Anslem is saying he's listening. Interesting. Okay, good to see you, Francis. John knows you next says, good morning, one and all. We had gale force winds and horizontal rain here last night. Really? Glad you kept it your way and not down here, man. Uh, he says, so the outside of the house has had a good, <laughs> good power wash. <laughs> As for the inside, do go day. <laughs> John, come on, man. It's just a week before Christmas. You got to get the place cleaned up. Do all your mopping and varnishing and scrubbing. And yeah, man, a little, dab a little paint here and a little paint. Yeah. We're coming to visit you, you know. Christmas morning. Don't be surprised if you see a whole side of us at your front door. Um, let's see here. Oswald is saying good day. Good day to you too, Mr. Darbo. Uh, John says, love the Kaji Claudette interview. Yeah. There was a press conference yesterday, and uh, I attended that, and uh, Claudette Joseph was explaining along with her attorney um, the fact that she has been threatened with a lawsuit by the prime minister and uh, they're just brushing it aside. They have absolutely no attention to meet the demands being made by the prime minister. And um, if you'd like to take a look at that, you can go to the, well, you're there now, on the GrenadaBroadcast.com website. It's there. You can take a look. Some very, very interesting points made there yesterday. Very interesting points. But remember, that's uh, Claudette's side. Prime Minister has a different view, to which he too is entitled, they're both entitled to their perspectives. And uh, if her response is going to be serious, uh, looks like we're probably going to be in for a bit of a battle there. Okay, so check it out. And by the way, I intend to run that press conference for you on Sunday. Okay? Um, okay, let's see what else is here. Sonia Math, who else is here? Sonia Mathlin Scott. Hello there, Sonia. Say good morning, and Claude Putner is also saying good morning. Uh, John says, in that case, I'll soak the ham and get the sorrow going. Absolutely, John. We're coming to visit you. Now, on the lighter side, just before we get to the national report, let's make a little Wednesday morning visit, midweek visit, to Doggyville. John, I know you have a little puppy up there. I know that Ryan, I don't know if Ryan's got a replacement. His, his dog, Jay, died some time ago. And uh, I think you folks are going to enjoy this. For all you pet lovers out there, check this out. <laughs> I think this dog had one too much to do. There's one that's going to show up in a minute that looks so much like uh, Margaret when she's having a bad hair day. Hold on a sec. There it is. <laughs> Sorry, Mags, I just couldn't resist that. <laughs> okay, boy, I'm not going to hear the end of that one, I know. 
I know. Oh, puppies are so darn cute. Hmm? Look at this little guy. Look at this little guy. Hmm. I got it. You got it. I got it. You got it. Uh, uh. Hello there. Are you going to come in and have some coffee? Oh, oh. Do go day. <laughs> so that's what you do with a toilet paper rose, eh? <laughs> Hello. Hello. Rock a bye, baby, on the treetop. When the wind blows, the cradle will rock. It's mine. No, it's not. It's mine. Uh. <laughs> uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Puppies, puppies, puppies. I like this guy. Looks like somebody from the Wild West, man. Looks like he's got his gun on the side there. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm just having a little snooze. Just a little snooze. Leave me alone. Leave me alone. I want that. I want that. I want that. I want that. I'll eat anything. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. If at first you don't succeed, try and try again, and let's see. Yep, there you go. Now, isn't that creative? Look at that. He jumps over 17 of those, you know. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. <sighs> That's good. That's good. Ooh, look at that big cat on the TV. Wanted to get me? Mm -mm. Okay, so there. We thought we'd put a little smile on your face this morning. Ah, uh, yes. Um, before I get back here to uh, the National, Kipling says, well, 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 some may want to keep Corruption moving. Just a proverb. In short, KCM. All right, folks, that's now, let's see here, 19 minutes after the hour. Let's take our first little break here, and then uh, we'll come on back with the National. Brenlec continues to celebrate 25 years of partnership and growth. So this December, we're giving every customer the chance to spin and win. Just pay your bill in full on or before December 18th. Then, on Wednesday, December 18th, join us at any Brenlec customer care location. Spin to win giveaways that will make this season even more festive. Hams, groceries, gift vouchers, wine, electricity vouchers, and more. Join the celebration. December 18th, spin and win with Grenlec. Visit our website or Facebook page for more information. Terms and conditions apply. Why wish upon a star? For a bank, it's better by far. Whatever your wish is for this Christmas, we'll give you no interest and no fuss. Co-op Bank is making Christmas wishes come true. Fix up your home, treat your loved ones, and get everything on your Christmas list this year with our No Fuss Loans. As we count down the 12 days to Christmas, you can win awesome prizes every day. Special terms and conditions apply. Christmas wishes come true with Co-op Bank and you. Juve chocolates, cocoa nibs, and cocoa balls from Diamond Estate Grenada are now available at Amazon.com, Amazon.ca, Amazon.co.uk, and GrenadaMarket.com. Try the sensational touch of nutmeg and a touch of ginger chocolates. 75% dark and rich, 100% pure cocoa, and their 60% dark and sweet chocolate bars today. Amazon Prime members enjoy free shipping on these orders in the USA, Canada, and Europe. GrenadaMarket.com. 
when you can't come to the island, the products of the island will come to you. Because your vehicle is a necessity, being roadworthy is critical. Hubbard's Motor Department introduces its new tire and battery sales and service outlet located at Building Supplies Compound in Grand Ans, close to the Sugar Mill Roundabout. Available are a wide range of competitively priced tires, maintenance-free batteries, oils and lubricants. Keeping in mind your busy schedule, this outlet is equipped to provide you with fast and reliable service. Simply drive in and you'll be delighted with your service experience. For more information, contact 4402087 Hubbards. Quality service, affordable prices. Water quality resource management placed under the microscope as the government promotes food and nutrition security for all. We'll have details to this story and more in the National Report. With the details to the news for today, Tuesday, December 17th, I am Rakesha St. Louis. A cross-sectional approach has been taken to raise awareness on integrated water resources management with key stakeholders participating in a four-day workshop which aims to build capacity for effective water quality management in Grenada. The workshop opened at the National Stadium on Tuesday, 17th December. We get more in this Mena Booker report. In keeping with the mandate of raising awareness on integrated water resources management, more than 20 stakeholders from the Ministries of Agriculture, Climate Change and the Environment, Health, private water companies and farmers are attending the workshop at the National Stadium. Water, which is a key driver of economic and social development, has a basic function in maintaining the integrity of the natural environment. Over the four days, participants will be exposed to areas including water quality sampling, testing using certified laboratory equipment and water quality field kits, as well as best management practices in water sampling quality, monitoring and surveillance. The workshop is organized by the Global Water Partnership Caribbean in collaboration with the Ministry of Agriculture and Lands in all thrust to ensure food and nutrition security for all. It is imperative that we start a sampling program and start to have a baseline and then build on that over the coming years that we know exactly what is the quality of the water and we can then track any changes in, in the water quality, whether it's, 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 um, it's getting worse or it's, or it's improving based on what environmental um, practices we do in, in the watersheds or up in the highlands. That's Acting Chief Land Use Officer in the Ministry of Agriculture and Chairman of the Global Water Partnership Caribbean, Mr. Trevor Thompson. This aligns to the Sustainable Development Goal 6, one of the 17 Sustainable Development Goals established by the United Nations General Assembly in 2015, which calls for clean water and sanitation for all people. Mr. Alphonsus Daniel, an engineer with a wide range of experience in the planning, design, supervision, and management of water and wastewater systems, is the facilitator of the course. Our sampling, testing, and analysis will fall directly into IWRM, Integrated Water Resources Management. And then we will see the importance. Mr. Thompson alluded to it. All sectors from drinking water, as you say, agriculture, and in our case, I think about other competing, all those who compete. Chief Agricultural Officer Mr. Daniel Lewis spoke of the importance of water quality towards food security. We need to use water to irrigate um, and vegetables, especially the leafy ones, you don't have to cook and so forth. And if it is that that water contains pathogen and contaminated, you know, the likely impact on, um, on, 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 on health and health and food safety. Ensuring that we put a, a testing regime in place to ensure 
that by doing that will be safe to the health of um, and safety of our consumers participants of this training will also gain a wealth of knowledge on how to analyze results from water quality tests the world health organization guidelines for drinking water quality the european union recommended estuary or harbor basin water standards and other standards that grenada adheres to upon completion the participants will receive a certificate the training runs from november 17th through 20th for the ministry of agriculture i am mina Boka. thank you mina continuing with the news Minister for Kariku and P.D. Martinic Affairs, Honorable Kendra Mather and Stewart, says the Kariku Tennis Court, home to Parang bands and festivals, will be refurbished in 2020. The upgrades will be done through funding from the Ministry of Kariku and P.D. Martinic Affairs and the National Lotteries Authority. The announcement was made during the 2019 Parang Festival over the weekend. The Ministry of Kariku and P.D. Martinic Affairs in partnership with the National Lottery Authorities during the early part of 2020, will engage in comprehensive redevelopment of this facility. This Hillsborough Tennis Court is a nesting ground of our culture, and so it must be upgraded. Deputy Chairman of the Festival Board, Indra Scott, said the theme is timely considering the vision of the board to get more young people involved in the culture. We as a board have recognized the need to revive and revitalize all aspects of culture. In so doing, we are proud to say that we have achieved one of our many objectives by being able to successfully host many projects, including a string grant training project aimed at nurturing at our young people, specifically in the string music. This year's festival was held under the theme, Keeping Culture Alive Through Strings. Here are some highlights from the 2019 festivals. Oh, do you love, think you smart. One day you go get caught. It's the kind of things that you do. That's how we sing it on you. Is the parang jumpy. Half them shit she read. Is the parang jumpy. Half them pass on the... You think we're joking? This year we know who I'm despairing. You set the location. That is why we love good para. You can't keep it secret. That is why we sing in on it. It's good children mouth. That is where the story is from. This is the National Report. We'll have more news after the break. Did you join the public service on or after February 22nd, 1985 and have since retired? This might be important to you. Government understands that the NIS pension may be insufficient to take care of your needs. So, while it awaits the court's ruling on the matter of pension for public officers, government has taken action to protect your quality of life so that you can take care of your needs in the meantime. Persons who join the public service on or after February 22, 1985 and serve continuously in an established position for a minimum 26 years and 8 months and retired at age 60 may be eligible to receive an advance payment, which when combined with NIS, represents 70% of their last salary. For more information, call or visit the Pension Secretariat in the Department of Public Administration Ministerial Complex, 440-3767. Welcome back. Indian High Commissioner Designate to Grenada, His Excellency Arun Kumar Sahu, presented his credentials to Governor General Her Excellency Dame Cecile Lagrenade on Tuesday. Grenada and the Republic of India have enjoyed diplomatic relations since 1975, with Grenada benefiting in education and cultural exchanges. Governor General Her Excellency Dame Cecile Lagrenade said Grenada is pleased to have benefited and anticipates more benefits in the years ahead. Grenada has benefited tremendously from technical assistance from India over the years. In addition to short-term training courses, 
India has offered postgraduate scholarships to Grenadians. For the period 2019, 2018 to 2019, 10 slots were allotted to the government of Grenada under the Technical and Economic Cooperation IT, ITEC program. In 2019, our country has also been the beneficiary of short-term courses under this program with young Grenadians traveling to India to pursue training in diverse areas such as economics, health, public administration, agriculture, among others. His Excellency says togetherness is the watchword in the relationship between both countries. He too anticipates stronger ties and more benefits moving forward. We look forward to be even a, get a bigger partner in the growth story of Grenada. As you were aware, the first ever India CARICOM Summit in September 2019 in New York, India has committed resources for further strengthening our cooperation. This opens a new chapter in our relations. As the High Commissioner of India, I am committed to work hard to act as a strong bridge to unfold the potentials of our relationship. I believe in togetherness. Together we grow and together we prosper. The Indian High Commissioner designated to Grenada on Monday paid a courtesy call to Prime Minister Dr. The Right Honorable Keith Mitchell and the Foreign Affairs Minister Honorable Peter David to chart the course for deeper relations. Finally, in the news, it was an early Christmas for many students as the Ministry of Civil Aviation and the Rotary Club of Grenada, in collaboration with Florida Caribbean Cruise Association, brought Christmas cheer to many schools. Dubbed the Student Gift Program, hundreds of students received toys and other supplies. The gift program is geared towards building and enhancing communities. We view today's event as being consistent with our goal of community service. And we are happy to be part of this event that brings goodwill and joy to an important segment of our society, our young ones who we deem as the future of our nation. Minister for Tourism and Civil Aviation Honorable Clarice Modest Cohen commended the partnership of the Florida Caribbean Cruise Association in bringing hundreds of visitors to our shores and also spreading the Christmas joy to many students. FCCA is a great partner with us. Um, last year we, we had for the first time over half a million visitors. We're small and we're growing but we celebrated that and the cruise lines contributed significantly to the visitors that came to our shores. And so we're thankful to FCCA for that partnership. This year, we expect it to grow more. And yesterday, I was so excited. We had four cruise ships coming into Grenada, four, over 8,000 people in our little pure Grenada Isle and the Isle of Spice or the Spice of the Caribbean. And we know they all enjoyed it. And come Boxing Day, I am told we will have our biggest um, group of visitors yet, um, more than the 8,000, 8,000 plus, but more than what we got yesterday. That story just ended the national report for today, Tuesday, December 17th. Let's recap the top story. Water quality resource management placed under the microscope as the government promotes food and nutrition security for all. On behalf of the entire news team here at the Government Information Service, I am Rakesha St. Louis saying thank you for joining us. Until next time.
Alrighty, folks, there you have it. Last night's edition of the National Report. Seems like what really triggered you guys this morning was uh, the talk about water, water, water. And uh, Anthony Howard says here, I understand the need to test our drinking water. We're also going to, are we also going to start testing the water at our beaches? You know, Anthony, just let me say this, eh? Um, I have always had a tough time drinking water directly from the tap. But since I moved up here to Woolwich Road, um, end of January will be six years. I have pretty much drank water from the tap every day. No problem whatsoever. A boil, no boil, whatever, okay? Until within the last month. You know we've had a lot of issues here with Nawasa. And then my stomach just went haywire. I think we talked about this on the program from time to time. Very uncomfortable feeling on your chest and then the diarrhea and all that stuff. And so for the last, it's going on nearly a month now, I've just been drinking bottled water. And yesterday I actually took out a bottle of uh, mineral water here got an empty bottle and put some water in from the tap and held them up side by side. And you can see a distinct difference in color, okay? I don't know, uh, all this talk about testing, 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 I'm not holding my breath to hear the results of those tests, really, I'm not. I just gotta be honest with you. Nothing ever comes of it. But it's, it's shameful because a lot of people are living uncomfortable lives because they can't get some pure water from their taps. And I think that's a darn shame. Uh, he also goes on to say, hold on, uh, we spend lots of time at the beach and lots of the same dangerous conditions can also be found there. You know, you can ask Sharon when she comes on in just a wee bit. We've uh, talked from time to time, even though the water down at Grand Nance looks absolutely crystal clear, you know it ain't. You know that stuff is contaminated with all those yachts anchored off uh, Mount Pandy, and some of them even get pretty darn close to uh, Grand Anne's. So you know what's in that water. On top of that, you have a hospital up on the promontory there. <laughs> so, oh! Ah! Claude says he was uh, asking the same, he was about to ask the same question. Margaret says, read the beach water. Anthony Howard, do go day. But on a serious note, you're quite right. I do remember back in 1983, the Americans tested Grand Dance and the results were not good then. I'm willing to bet it is no different now given what we know about the dumping of sewage in the south of the island. It's true, you know. I remember the days when sailing around uh, Point Saline, you could smell, you could smell the sewage as you sailed around Point Saline, right off the end of the runway down there. Uh, on another note, Joan Wellington says, corruption seems to be the new meaning of poverty because the countries who are accused of being corrupt are the ones where its people are becoming poorer and more dependent on the powers that be. Ain't that the truth? Yeah, that ensures your votes. Uh, John is responding to Margaret here. He says, true, Margaret, yet more big hotels and no sewage treatment plant improvements. Sonia Matherin agrees with that. She says, this is so true. Um, and John wants to know how Sharon's back is doing. Well, I'll tell you what, let's, let's take a quick little break here and then we're gonna come back. She, she's all set to go. Just, we're gonna have some fun. Juve chocolates, cocoa nibs, and cocoa balls from Diamond Estate Grenada are now available at Amazon.com, Amazon.ca, Amazon.co.uk, and GrenadaMarket.com. Try the sensational touch of nutmeg and a touch of ginger chocolates. 75% dark and rich, 100% pure cocoa, and their 60% dark and sweet chocolate bars today. Amazon Prime members enjoy free shipping on these orders in the USA, Canada, and Europe. GrenadaMarket.com 
When you can't come to the island, the products of the island will come to you. Can I have a chicken lunch, please? Large. Real nice today. Mm-mm. I don't want that. But you just asked for a chicken lunch. I don't have problem with the lunch. Afraid the container. Why is the problem with it? These styrofoam containers. They don't go for the environment. They shorten me life. What foolishness are you telling me? So what do you want me to use? Put my food in this. Where you get that? At the food fair, where you could get all biodegradable food boxes and disposable food supplies like cups, plates, anything you could think about. Name it, it's there. And they don't harm the environment. Food fear, taking the lead in cleaning up and protecting the environment. Hey, hey. like you take me advice, you get in your biodegradable food supplies. Hey girl, I supporting who's supporting the environment. That is why I'm shopping at Food Fair. Food Fair, where you can fill your baskets without emptying your pockets. Products distributed by Hubbard's agency, Kirani James Boulevard. Christmas safety tips. Always unplug Christmas tree lights before leaving home or going to sleep. Check your tree lights and outdoor lights for damage each year before you use them. Discard lights with frayed wires, loose connections, and cracked sockets. Do not overload your wall outlets or extension cords. Remind children never to touch lights or outlets. Select lights appropriately. Never use indoor lights outside or vice versa. Happy Holidays from Green Lake. Why wish upon a star? Co-op Bank is making Christmas wishes come true. Fix up your home, treat your loved ones, and get everything on your Christmas list this year with our No Fuss Loans. As we count down the 12 days to Christmas, you can win awesome prizes every day. Special terms and conditions apply. Christmas wishes come true with Co-op Bank and you. Alrighty, folks, here we go, here we go, midweek, Wednesday morning. Time to say good morning to this young lady sitting over there looking so solemn this morning. Uh, I thought you might be on top of the world, man. You're, you're an adjudicator this morning. How you doing, Sharon? I'm good. Very you're good. good. <laughs> you're very good. <laughs> yes. You know, um, doesn't this make you wonder when Anthony talks here about uh, the water at the beaches, doesn't it make you wonder? Yes. I'm thinking, oh gosh, I so enjoy that water. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. You know, sometimes it's better not to know what you're yeah, getting yeah. into. He goes on to say here, Grenadians should make the government prioritize the construction of a wastewater treatment plant and the implementation and enforcement of coastal water quality. You're holding your breath? That's a dream. <laughs> That's a dream. And then you wake up to reality and it's it's worse than, than we speak about. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, folks, this class is called to order. All right. All right. I hope you guys have your little thingies ready. I don't care what you made your notes on. Start socking it to us. We want to know about something good really good that's happened to you in 2019 and don't tell me nothing good happened to you i know you come on facebook and youtube every day complaining yes. about what's wrong Truth i think i think this um charity begins at home mm -hmm. so let's begin at home you go first <laughs> <laughs> well it's to me it, to me it's easy yeah. Because among all the, the negative things that happened to me this year, the most joyous, interesting, beautiful, all the positive words, I got to spend 10 days in Belize with my children and grandchildren. Okay. With my first three sons and six grandchildren. So that was the highlight of my year. Okay. Sort of family reunion kind of thing? I was in Florida and decided to, to check um, 
because it was so near to Belize, mm -hmm. and found a um, flight for $78 return with Southwestern. So I um, popped in on them. The grandchildren wasn't expecting me, just... Ah, surprise! To, yeah, the sons knew. And um, it was a big surprise. Okay, so that was your biggie. And I could see that being a biggie. Now, let me, let me tell you, I have so many, so many good things. I've been through hell. But so many good things have happened. First of all, I'm, I'm still alive. And I'm really, really happy for that. You know, I've had my share of health problems. Like yeah. Anthony the Riggs, uh, he had a heart problem. I had a lung problem and all that kind of stuff. But I'll tell you one of the things, and I'm not saying this because you're sitting here, Sharon, but one of the really nice things that happened to me is that after a hiatus of about eight years, mm -hmm. not going to the beach, you started taking me to the beach every morning. Right. And we did that for about a month. For almost two months. Almost and two we months. we stopped because the one, the water was... Starting to get cold. Started, well, in my case, it's rough. Not so much cold. Yeah. But my back couldn't handle the, um, the waves beneath the waves. Okay. And you go in and you go down and then yeah, you yeah, up. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, it yeah, was, yeah. It was a bit too much. And you know, when we talk rough, we're not talking really serious rough here, but compared to what Grand Dance is, you, was like when we started in August. Right. Great. And you know, at, at this time of the year, it happens. The water okay. is a little rougher than yeah. normal. Yeah. You know, sometimes sitting on the balcony here, you can even see it in the bay outside here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, okay, we have gotten started. You heard from Sharon, you heard from me, and I'm sure as time goes by, we'll probably think of some other things. Benedict Cador says, I welcomed my first grandchild in yes. July. Yes, that's a biggie. Yeah. Grandchildren are the best. I wonder when am I, when am I gonna say that? But first I gotta have a child, right? All right. <laughs> but grandchildren, oh my gosh, I so enjoy being a grandmother. Yeah. How many you got? Seven. Only Let's one see, in Grenada. Let's seven grandchildren. Only, seven? <laughs> only one in Grenada, my okay. grandson, Ethan, who is seven. But my first grandson is, is 13. He goes okay. to secondary school. He's in Belize. And I have a 12-year-old granddaughter and down to a two-year-old grandson. Okay. So the nice thing is every time they, they have a new baby, I get to go to Belize and break them in. And tell me now, <laughs> now you're looking forward to your first great grandchild? Great grand? Oh, well, not really. My key's only 13 and then and 12, so. They better wait at least another 10 years or so. <laughs> okay. John. You know John? I know of John. You know of John? Well, John says, I got my 20 score years and 10. So the Lord's coming to He's take you, man. <laughs> 20 score and 10? No, 20 score. Couldn't be 20 score. 20 would that be what, 400 years? <laughs> <laughs> A score is 20. Yeah. 20 score? You mean three score and 10. John? Now, you know, on second thought, that explains why he is the way he is. You know, if <laughs> he's a man at 20 score. He must be Moses. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you guys didn't know we had Moses in the audience, right? Yeah. Wow, John, John, think about that. Think about that, John. He says, George, you can't have a step-grandchild. You, can't you have a step-grandchild? Yes, I, um, I, I have two, but I don't call them my step-grandchildren. I call them my bonus grandchildren. Bonus. Yeah, because my daughter call them her bonus children. Oh, okay. So. Okay. John says, score, sorry. Three score? You meant three score. I don't think you meant... If it's score on 10, that means he's only 30. He is very young. Oh, my gosh. John, John ain't, don't, don't try I it. John ain't no much, very young. 
I have children much older than that. John ain't, I know John. He okay. ain't no, John, you ain't no very young. I think you meant, bottom line is you're 70 years old. That's what you're trying to tell me, right? So he's three score and 10. Three score and 10, not, not 20 score. <laughs> Boy, wait until Margaret comes after you. Mm -hmm. Oh, Margaret, Mar speak of the devil. <laughs> Margaret says, John, you didn't realize you were, I didn't realize you were along, you were around that long, 410 years. <laughs> That's a record. I mean, I know Caribou is good for records, but... <laughs> oh! Okay, John. Okay. Um, and yeah, we got that sorted out. So that means you're ahead of me by, what, two years? I'm, I'm 68. Feeling like... Uh, never mind. <laughs> um, let's see here. Uh, John Franco says, Every time my granddaughter wakes me up, this. Nice to have the kids jump in the bed and get you going. Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh. I get the complaint from my grandson because I, I wake up very early. And when he comes, he sleeps with me and he tells Granddad, um, Granddad, you could sleep in the, in the guest room because I'm <laughs> sleeping with Nana. <laughs> but he would come and snuggle up between the two of us. And when he wake up and I'm gone, the other day he came to the kitchen and he said, Nana, was your bed wet? I said, no, so I'm thinking, did he wet my bed? I said, why? He said, you get up so early, it's like your bed wet, like somebody <laughs> chased you from the bed. I said, I wonder, oh, this good? I wonder who old people my child been hanging around. <laughs> uh, how old is he? He's seven, seven. going on 17. Uh, let's see here, Lincoln, you know Lincoln Roberts? Hey. That's Lincoln says, mean. good day, everyone. Love, peace, and blessings from Wellington, Florida. Well, Lincoln, let me see. The best thing that's happened to you this year, I'm talking on your behalf now. You were here. You came down to see your sister hmm? after she spent some time up there in your beautiful mansion. You came down. So tell us what else good happened to you this year. Because I'm sure there are some good things that has happened to you. I saw, I saw Lincoln for most of the month of January, March, April, September. Mm -hmm. So, and then he came down for August. So we spent a lot of time together this year. That's good. Okay. John says he taught Moses all he knows. <laughs> <laughs> you said that, we didn't, John. You okay. said that. Kipling Francis says, for me, the happiest time was when so many people prayed for me when I said I had prostate cancer. That alone was enough to put my mind at ease. Thanks to all, I will never forget that. That is, that is so good. You know, it's, it's one thing to pray for yourself, but when you know that lots of friends, people who know you and people who don't even know you, but know of you, lift you up. Mm -hmm. And that is, that is so good and that is so important. I'm glad you mentioned that, Sharon, because let me tell you, um, you, you know that many years ago I worked for several years as a, a tour operator on the Rum Runner. Mm -hmm. And as a result, I got to meet a lot of people, okay? And uh, I think it was in 1999 when I was diagnosed as having terminal colon cancer mm -hmm. and given less than a year to live. I started reaching out to a lot of these people I knew around the world and people were praying mm -hmm. and praying. I was amazed. Do you know something, girl? They sent me up to Canada, confirmed the diagnosis, scheduled surgery, and my cancer disappeared. Disappeared. Don't I, call, don't I call mean it. disappeared. Say the cancer, not my cancer. The I don't, cancer. I don't claim any of those things. I don't claim any of those things. Yeah. The cancer disappeared. It's a miracle. Yeah. For people who don't believe in miracles, let me tell you, every time you look at me, you're seeing one of them. 
And you know, you have the opposite of the people who pray for you. You have those who give you so much stress. I had an issue with, with cancer, and the amount of people who were sending me messages about people who died of cancer. One girl actually called me and said, um, you know, my friend's father died of the same throat cancer and this and that. How come you, you still live in? And then somebody actually said that to me one Sunday evening, I came out of church, and this guy who was a, a, a professor at Tam CC approached me and said, you know, this girl who had the same surgery like you at the same time, she died last week. What are you waiting for? Mm -hmm. The priest who just did mass was standing there and he said to him, are you crazy? And I was so shocked, I just started to cry. And the priest said to me, don't, don't worry with these people. Just keep praying, and he prayed with me. And then when the six months later, I did my check, and, and the cancer had returned, and there were um, cells going up to my brain and all this. And I had lots of people praying for me and laying hands on me. And the time passed that they gave me to die, and I was still alive. And three months later, the cells were less, and another three months with, with, with therapy and all that, of course. Here I am today. You and I should I write a book. I wasn't supposed to see 2006. There you go. I know. Yeah. So I thank God every day, every day, not just, not just when I wake up, constantly. Same here, same here. Sometimes I'm not even sure what I'm saying thank you for, but I just yeah. go around doing my chores and saying thank yeah. you Lord, thank you Lord. And sometimes I burst into song and I remember when I was at a, a real bad place and I mentioned before I'm Catholic and there was this priest, Father Malcolm from Trinidad, I don't, don't know where he is now. And I, I had to talk to him because I couldn't pray. I was just at this place where I think I was overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. And he said to me, if you really believe, and you believe that God knows your deepest thoughts before you even think it, just say, dear God, you see and you know. Mm -hmm. And he, he knows what you're feeling, he knows what you're going mm -hmm. through, and just have the faith and belief that he's always there for you. Mm -hmm. It's worked for me. Boy, you know, sometimes you come across people who don't like to hear you talk about God. They don't mm -hmm. believe in God and all that. But let me tell you, after you've lived the sort of life that I have, yeah. you've got to be cuckoo to not believe. 20 years ago, given less than a year mm -hmm. to live, and guess what? After I got the clean bill of health, I never even went back to a doctor about this issue. Gone, as far as I'm concerned. Finito, done. Yeah. Um, let me see. I read, did I tell you the one about Kipling? Kipling says he's, yes. okay. Lincoln Roberts says, I did my physical a few weeks ago and was given a clean bill of health. Great. Feel like a 30 year old. Don't, uh, 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 don't try that, Vicky. <laughs> <laughs> don't try that. <laughs> well, you know, they say a man is as old as he feels. He feels. And if he feels 30, he's more power 30. to you. <laughs> <laughs> and guess what? He attributes that to family love. Yes. That's one right thing. We're, we're very big on family. Yeah, yeah. Ah! Penny, have you met? Did you meet Penny? Is that your friend from Canada? Yeah. Yes. Penny says, one of the best things that's happened to her, visiting a dear friend in Grenada. Yes. And we got to have dinner together. We had dinner together. Yeah. Penny, you're making me blush, girl. Yeah. Yeah. Penny, yeah. 
So it, it's not always when something happens to you that you mark it off as one of the good things that happened to you. Because you could do something yes. that could be one of the best things that's happened to you. Yeah. And I, Penny making a visit down from uh, Snow Country. Yeah, okay, thanks. Hope to see you again, Penny, soon, soon. Anthony the Rig says, I am a living miracle. From a serious heart problem two years ago, I was able to climb hills in Grenada recently with ease. Yeah, and I didn't even get to meet you. Still haven't met you. Well, I think he's, he's about to finish uh, another book, okay? Mm -hmm. That should be done early in the new year. And I can bet my bottom dollar he's going to be back down here, if not to launch it, then at least to make people aware of it. We're going to have him in here, and we're going to make sure that you're yeah. here with him. A good friend of Ray Roberts, too. My little thingy keeps falling out of my ear here. Maybe your, your ear is shrinking. No, it's getting bigger. My ear is getting bigger. <laughs> Maybe because of that flu. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe because of that flu that's been going around. Uh, okay, so you guys have quieted down a little bit. I'm really glad to see that a number of you recognize that, you know, there, there are good things that have happened in, in 2019. We still have a couple of minutes left, so uh, if there's anything else you'd like to add, please go ahead and do so. Um, you might even want to tell us about something that you have done for somebody. You know, there are people who will stop and say, hey, thank you for doing that. And there are others, they just take you for granted. Don't mind, still feel good about the fact that you did something for somebody. Right. You know, something that, that happened to me this year, I don't normally celebrate All Year's Night or the coming in of the new year. That's, I tend to like to stay at home and just bring it in quietly. But um, the year before, my husband likes to go out and party. You know, he liked the new year to meet and party. Mm. And the year before, he bought me this beautiful dress. And he said, would you go to, to, to this New Year's Eve party with me? And I said, OK. And I looked at the dress, and I actually said to the dress, I said, you're a beautiful dress, <laughs> but I wish I didn't have to wear you because I really don't want to go partying. 10 minutes later, I fell and broke my ankle. <laughs> what I did not go to the party, needless to say. So last year, I, I decided I'll go. And the first person I saw was one of my favorite people in the world. He is one of my cousins. His name is Dominic Patris. And I saw Dominic. Is that the one who sometimes joins us on? Yes. And I was so happy to see him because that year he had some, some challenges with health and his heart and, and whatnot. And I went up to Florida and didn't get to see him. And I was, I was so sad that I didn't see him because he was in hospital and all this. And to walk in there and see him and his wife, and that was the best thing that happened to me mm -hmm. as the new year came in. And it just got better. Yeah. What did your dress say to you when you talked to it? <laughs> <laughs> I, I couldn't resist. <laughs> <laughs> Just lay there. <laughs> and I guess it said, well, you don't want to wear me? Take that. <laughs> <laughs> Anthea Rello. You know John Rello? I know. I've seen him. I don't know him. I think I spoke to him once or twice what a when guy. I worked at the U.S. Embassy. But I, um, I don't know the person. What a guy. What a guy. Anthea says, I am grateful every day. I suffered an aneurysm in 1992, wow. thanking God for life every day. Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, it's, it's so ironic that she should bring up this aneurysm thing there because uh, I just went through a hell of a time over the last week with some really, really severe pains on the right mm -hmm. side of my head. 
But I found out now that it was this flu that's still going around and beating the stuffing out of a lot of people. Wow. And, but there were people out there who wanted me to rush to a doctor because when you have these severe headaches, you know, it could be something more than just a little headache. Well, a headache is always something more than just telling you to, hey, check yourself. Did you hear anything? Yeah. You heard something. Okay, so it's not hollow. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Shh. Don't go day. Don't go day. Sean, our friend in uh, the Azores. Wow. Sean says, hi to you both and our listeners. One of the nicest things that happened to me is this program and feeling part of this brethren and sisterin. Oh, that's so nice. <laughs> I didn't know you knew that term, sisterin. Huh? I always look forward to hearing from John. Yeah. Make sure he's okay out there. This is Sean. 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 He goes on to say, that and surviving a hurricane and a few earthquakes. Wow. Blessed we are, for sure. Yeah. There's a hurricane that went up there, and uh, I don't think it really devastated them like Ivan did to us, but uh, they got pounded. They got pounded. And they've been having some shakes. Mm. You know, Sean and John is this, the same meaning. One is the Irish version. Oh, is it? Sean is the Irish version of John. Okay. Now, I have, um, not many people have children with the same name. My first son is, um, his middle name is Conrad, and my last son, his first name is Conrad. So I have two sons with the same name. And my second son, his name is John. And my number four son, his name is Sean. How many middle names do you have? I have two. Two middle names. They are Sharon. No, my first name is Elizabeth. Elizabeth. My name is Elizabeth Doris Sharon. Elizabeth Doris Sharon. Yes, and that's S H E two R S O N. Right, and then Wiltshire. Roberts Wiltshire. Roberts Wiltshire. Five names to carry, you're back, no wonder you have backaches. Five <laughs> names to carry you around. You see, my father gave me Roberts, and I'm helping Winthrop to carry Wilshire. Yeah? Wow. George, Raymond, Anthony. That's three. Grant. Okay. Okay. Claude Putner says, Mr. Grant, my best time of the year is seeing this nice lady. The first time on your show, she reminded me of my, <laughs> my dead mother. <laughs> she also speaks like her. Okay. You are great, Mom. God bless you. Yeah. You remind that somebody is, of their mom. That is so sweet. Yeah. When a, when a, a, a man... Um, love his mother is the most beautiful thing. When a man love and respect his mother, it means that he's gonna be a good man because he's gonna love and respect the woman in his life as well. I don't have a woman. <laughs> <laughs> you know. You know, you yeah. have to find your one then. Yeah, 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 don't, don't. Don't go there. Don't, don't go there. <laughs> don't, don't get them started this morning, please. Don't get them started. You know, last week, 12 years since I lost my mom. Last week. Yeah. And I can't, I can never forget it because it's on my outlook on my computer. And every year, pops up, pops up, pops up. And then the day after that, brandy, my mm -hmm. pooch. Okay, I think that's gonna do it. 10 minutes after the hour. Thank you very much. Now you and I are going to visit a shut-in. Right. And uh, I thank you so much, Sharon, for agreeing to do this. <laughs> you know, this lady has been an ardent listener to my Sunday program. She's perhaps for as long as it's been going and we're, we're about to finish our 15th year. 
And I never met the lady. But let me tell you, every Sunday morning, when we had the radio station on, she would be phoning in, phoning in, phoning in, phoning in. And I'm gonna tell the story whether you like it or not, Sharon. Mm -hmm. Yesterday, apparently she heard us talking about Sharon's cake. Sharon brought a piece of cake for me sometime, whenever, last week or whenever, a week before. And she called me yesterday and said, George, would you be kind enough to ask Sharon to let me have her recipe? So George picked up the phone and called Sharon. Sharon, pretty please. With sugar on it. <laughs> I called Sharon and asked for this recipe. And listen to the story before you jump to any conclusions. Sharon said, no, I can't share the recipe. That's my, my mom's private recipe. She gave it, tell the story from here. My mom gave me the recipe because I was the person helping her. And when she needed to pass it on, she gave it to me. I have shared some of it with my siblings, but not the entire recipe. And I feel that I have to keep that recipe I don't want to share it with anybody. I will not share it with anybody other than my daughter, if she decides that she wants to learn to make that version of a Christmas cake. Mm -hmm. And I just, as I said to George, I, I rather give her a cake than, than um, share my recipe. So guess what? Sharon volunteered on the spot, didn't have to scratch her head, volunteered to get this lady a cake. So Joan, you don't have to bake, you don't have to bake this week. When we get through here this morning, we're coming to see you. And you know, not only am I so happy that you have done this out of the goodness of your heart, God bless you, Sharon. But this is a lady who has been so supportive from where I sit. You know, she knows the hell I've been through. And uh, she's always got some kind and, and encouraging words, and she's, she's a loyal listener. Let me tell you, when I mess up, she let me know I mess up too, eh? Mm -hmm. Right? I like people like that. They don't just butter you up, you know? Right. So, but I've never met her. And I'm gonna meet her this morning. So I am pretty pumped up about that. So let's, let's get this thing out of here. Let's get out of here. And you know, one of the things about people listening to you, they, they develop a, a relationship with you and they think they know you. And sometimes they're disappointed. I remember some time ago, cause I um, was one of the original people who worked with Good News FM. And one day I was on air and I just came off and the, somebody called through and they said, Sean, there's a lady out, out there to see you. And I said, who is it? They said, well, um, she gave some name or the other. So I said, well, I don't know that person, but let me put on some music and I'll come out. And I went out and I said, um, I saw this lady. I said, can I help you? She said, I'm looking for Sharon Roberts. I said, I am Sharon Roberts. She said, oh, no, you're not. <laughs> I said, OK, um, who do you think I am? Who am I? <laughs> she said, I don't know who you are, but you are not Sharon Roberts. I said, OK, I'm very sorry. She said, um, Sharon Roberts is a much younger person. <laughs> I thought, Okay. <laughs> and then another day, this girl was sitting on the bus and I just, just completed a 12 hour shift and I was jumping the bus, I didn't have a car at the time and I was really tired. And the news started. At the time we had a branch of Good News FM called Caribbean News Service. Mm -hmm. And she turned around and she looked at me and she looked back in front and she looked at me again. 
And I sort of say, okay, you have a problem? She said, I always thought you were Sharon Roberts. I said, and why you think differently? She said, well, look at you here, and you read in the news there. I said, okay. I didn't even see you well. I am mm -hmm. Sharon Roberts. Mm -hmm. Media is a really, really weird, weird thing. It has its pluses and its minuses, pros and cons. You know, up to yesterday, walking to get a bus down by the terminal, somebody came over to me, hey, Mr. Grant, how you doing, man? And everybody who stops to talk to me on the street, I make sure I stop and talk to them. I like them, right? And they know me. And they think I know them. But some of these people I have, most of these people I have never seen a day in my life. Mm -hmm. And it's always such, not just a pleasure, but an honor to meet people who actually take the time to sit and listen to us kid bits around here, the right. way we do. Right. Uh, please, keep it up. God bless every one of you. Please, keep but it up. But you know one of the nicest things for me is if I go through Vendom or like Saturday, I was walking down from, from the gas station, walking towards the fish market. And this lady said, Sharon Roberts? I spin around, I looked at her, I said, yes. And I thought, this person looks familiar, but I don't have a clue. <laughs> she said, um, you taught me in Vendam. <laughs> now, I was teaching when I was 17 years old. And I taught lots of people from Vendam, including Tal Free. Oh, okay. And um, they recognize me, and sometimes the, I'm, I'm, you know, I don't want to get them upset that I don't remember your name, but um, quite a few of them I remember. Yeah. I taught the person who is now the headmistress of Vendom RC. Yeah. So I've been around a long time. <laughs> yeah. You know, that's the reason why uh, those of us who are in the media, we really need to be on our P's and Q's, boy. Yep. Uh, we impact people in ways that uh, we could never imagine. Uh, I don't know if I told you the story about when, uh, when the government shut down Chime FM. Mm -hmm. A lady phoned and she says, uh, this lady, I still haven't met this lady, but she sounded to me like an older person. And I don't like to use this word, but it's uneducated, okay? She's not uh, one of those hoity-toity people. And he says, Mr. Grant, is it true that I shut down your radio? I said, yes, ma'am. She says, oh, God, what I'll go do? <laughs> and I said, well, um, maybe one of these days we'll come back. But Mr. Grant, Mr. Grant, Mr. Grant, is you that teach me to read, you know? And now this is where I start backing up. Never met you. I don't know who you are. And I taught you to read? Yes. She says, yeah, Mr. Graham, Mr. Graham. You know, on, on Sunday morning, you just read them, she called them egicorial. She's referring to the editorials that yes. we read. And she says, you know when you read them thing? I just, I start trying to, to read along with you. She says, I ain't have a lot of money, eh? but when I have Penny hate me, I just go by the shop there, I just buy a paper, and when you read them editorial, editorial, I read it, Mr. Grant, that is how I learned to read it. Wow. Sharon, I sat right here in this chair and cried like a baby. What spurred me on to crying was the fact that this woman started screaming when she realized the station was gone. She started screaming because it meant a lot to her. Mm -hmm. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, I just sit here and talk. Yeah. You never know the impact you're having on people out there. Yes. Never. Margaret says, yeah, Sharon. I guess she's referring to the fact that you're taking that cake to Joan in just a few <laughs> minutes. Well, Max, we'll see if I could do a little arm twisting and have Sharon spare some of her fantabulous cake when you come down here for the holidays? If she's coming for Christmas, that would be great. Um, I think she's coming on Christmas Day. 
Okay. Yeah. I'll make sure I save some for her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Say thank you, George. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Maria St. Bernard says, Good morning, Mr. Grant and Miss Wilshire. Mrs. Wilshire, have a blessed day. They're sending you yeah. blessings, girl. Thank you. And Bradley Vesprey says, George, blessings and guidance. Keep going. Yeah. By the way, girl, you know today is the day, a big historic day in the United States. I hear they're going to impeach Mr. Trump. Sure. Nothing that goes so. Huh? <laughs> no what? I don't think that would happen. They wouldn't, well, he wouldn't be out of office. They may impeach him. But, um, you know, there are some people that no matter what, you can't get rid of them. They're like a bad stain. Trump is one of them. <laughs> the bad stain. Now, this morning when I turned on the television set, the first thing I heard on CNN uh, was, it's going to be a historic day here in the United States today. Donald Trump is going to be impeached. Yeah. You know something? Last night, yesterday rather, when Winthrop came back to Grenada, was the first time in two weeks that CNN was on in my house. Mm -hmm. Once he leave, I do not hear the name Trump. I did. And I now it's Trump, 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 Trump. It's, you know, very tiring. <laughs> like Alan, Alan doesn't call him Trump. He calls him the buffoon. <laughs> she, well, Okay, Margaret says, no more for him, Sharon. He's had enough sugar and is out of control. Who asked you, Mags? But thanks for watching. This lady keeps an eye on me. She keeps me. Boy, you know, you know why so many people envy me? Because of people like you and Margaret and a few others who really keep me on the, the straight and narrow. Right. Lincoln, hey, your brother says he's baking today. Nice. He says, thanks, sis. Endless love to everyone. And he's always sending I wish he was here. Yeah, yeah. I met him I when he was here, him. but I wanted him to come and sit here personally and have a little chat with us. You here. know, he's, of, of all the 11 of us, well, my sister is gone, God rest her soul. He is a comedian in the crew, but he's shy. Okay, who's that? I'd, Linky. Okay. I don't think he would, he would... He's really shy. Okay. Well, I don't think I'm reading him wrong. I know him, <laughs> but um, he is such a comedian. He'll make you laugh from now until tomorrow. But to go public like that, I don't know. I'll ask him. I met him very briefly when he was here. He's just a nice guy. Just a nice guy. Look, Margaret is updating you here. Right? He says uh, the Republicans are trying to stall. They have moved for an adjournment. Okay. How do you pronounce this? M O R U O N. Moon? I guess he's some politician. Oh, that's somebody's name? Maybe somebody's name. Anyhow, it's he or it has been defeated. Or oh, the motion. Ah, there she is. She's correcting herself. She says the motion has been defeated. Okay, so they're stalling. Um, Benedict Cador says, yes, impeachment is different from removal from office. Exactly. Okay. So then what has this big deal been for the last few months? That's all you're hearing, impeachment, impeachment. Distraction. They're Politics. They're trying, but they wouldn't get rid of Trump. Okay. The people would have to get rid of Trump. They would have to vote him out. But with, I mean, up to now you don't know. Yes, it takes a while before you know who is going to represent the Democrats. But with so many of them in the race, mm -hmm. it's like, yeah. ooh, 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 ooh. Ryan says, George and Sharon, a sad day here in the United States. POTUS policies affects us all, albeit his secretarianism. Margaret says, she's responding to Benedict here. She says, a lot of people don't realize there's a difference between impeachment and yeah, I think that's one of the yes, reasons. Yes, so somebody called me and said, oh, they impeached Trump, so um, maybe Pence is going to be president. I said, what is wrong with you people? 
Yeah. <laughs> Maybe that's why this impeachment proceeding has gotten as much attention as it did, because, you know, the anti-Trump people just want to see some sort of action. Anyway. Mm. Sharon, we got to go and bring this cake for this lady. Yeah. Jo I wonder if jo Joan, I hope you're watching this morning. I think she watches. I know she watches, but I hope she is watching this morning because I know she's really not feeling well. She was, <laughs> we're coming, my girl. Uh, okay, so that's going to do it for us, Sharon. Thank you so much. Let me take a quick little break here and then we shall return right after this. Juve chocolates, cocoa nibs, and cocoa balls from Diamond Estate Grenada are now available at Amazon.com, Amazon.ca, Amazon.co.uk, and GrenadaMarket.com. Try the sensational touch of nutmeg and a touch of ginger chocolates. 75% dark and rich, 100% pure cocoa, and their 60% dark and sweet chocolate bars today. Amazon Prime members enjoy free shipping on these orders in the USA, Canada, and Europe. GrenadaMarket.com when you can't come to the island, the products of the island will come to you. Can I have a chicken lunch, please? Large. Real nice today. Mm -mm. I don't want that. But you just asked for a chicken lunch. I don't have problem with the lunch. I'm afraid the container. Why is the problem with it? These styrofoam containers, they don't go for the environment. They shot me with life. What foolishness you telling me? So what do you want me to use? Put my food in this. Where you get that? At the food fair, where you could get all biodegradable food boxes and disposable food supplies like cups, plates, anything you could think about. Name it, it's there. And they don't harm the environment. Food fair, taking the lead in cleaning up and protecting the environment. Hey, hey. Like you take me advice, you get in your biodegradable food supplies. Hey girl, I supporting who's supporting the environment. That is why I shop in that food fair. Food fair, where you can fill your baskets without emptying your pockets. Products distributed by Hubbard's agency, Kirani James Bolivard. Alrighty folks, this is where we're going to pull the curtain down on our final Wednesday for the year, but not before we share with you a parting word from the Holy Scriptures. Today's reading comes to you from the second book of Corinthians chapter 9. You know, somebody met me on the street one day, I, I used to say 2 Corinthians 9. Somebody met me, Mr. Grant, Mr. Grant, Mr. Grant, it's not 2 Corinthians 9. It's 2 Corinthians 9. Did you know that? That's right. And that's right, eh? Mm -hmm. Because it's 1 I, Corinthians and 2 Corinthians. I still see some televangelists saying uh, 2 Corinthians. But that's what it is, 2 Corinthians. No, no, no. 2 Corinthians is what they're saying. Eh, never mind. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 6, 7, and 8. Remember this. Whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. And whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each of you should give what you have decided to in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to bless you abundantly so that in all things, at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. Couldn't think of a nicer way to wrap it up. Right. And thank you. There's a lady who does not share sparingly. Thank you. I know. My dear friends, that's going to do it on this, uh, what's today, Wednesday morning? Oh, can I wish everybody out there? Hold on a sec. Let me bring you back up here. Uh,
Yeah, there she is, yes. Yes. Go ahead. I want to wish you all the best for the season and see you in the new year. Because remember, because Christmas Day is on a Wednesday and we wouldn't be here New Year's Day is on a Wednesday too. So you're going to see me the second Wednesday in January. So much love to all of you out there. And special love to my brother Lincoln. Linky! And Dominic. And Emmanuel. I have a brother in New York who listens to you all the time too, Emmanuel. Oh, really? Yes. We call him Uncle Mano. <laughs> so. Uncle Mano. Season's greetings, buddy. Yeah. Okay. So love you all. Mags, looking forward to seeing you. And we love you too, Sharon. Thank you so much. Uh, we really appreciate what you've been helping us to accomplish here on uh, Wednesday mornings. And I also want to say thanks to people like Alan and Ray and Brian and the Bain sisters. Have you seen the Bain yes. sisters? Boy, oh boy, them hot stuff, eh? Yes. And people opening Grenadians' eyes, eh? Very good. Yeah, Monday morning. All right, my dear friends, this is where we're going to pull the curtain down. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, Benedict the door says, Merry Christmas, Sharon. Uh, Ryan says, same to you, Sharon. Be safe. Love to all. My dear friends, we out of here. God bless you.